Sweet Sevens, it's so great to be with you. I'm Helen and today we're going to have a wonderful natural sciences lesson and we're going to also get a little bit creative because the focus of today's lesson is writing descriptions of elements. So let's get down to work. A very important skill that all scientists must have is the ability to write. And what are they going to be writing about? Their observations, what they see, and their findings, what they have discovered by doing experiments or investigations. They have to be able to use clear language that is meaningful to others. Now, are you a good communicator and can you write great descriptions? Well, today we're going to practice writing not only good descriptions, but great descriptions about the different elements. So what is a feature of a description? Well, you can't describe anything unless you know something about it. So you're going to have to do a little bit of research on the elements that, so that your descriptions are informed, that they've got lots of good scientific facts. Now, maybe you have your textbook with you. Maybe you have access to the internet and you're able to do some research on the internet about the different elements. You're going to use in your descriptions lots of adjectives. Remember, adjectives tell us about a noun. So the element is going to be the noun, right? Like sulfur. Sulfur is a thing, a substance. Your adjectives are going to be words that you use that describe the sulfur. So things like yellow, crumbly, powdery, smelly, those are going to be uh, adjectives that you use to describe the element sulfur. These adjectives are also going to be able to describe the properties of your element. Is it a solid? Is it a gas? At room temperature? What is it in terms of its malleability? And it's, is it ductile? Can we hammer it into sheets? Can we draw it into long wires? You're going to make a list of the words you want to use based on your research into the properties. And then once you've got your list of words, then you're going to compile short sentences. Not very, very long sentences. One sentence to describe each property. Now we're going to practice it together and we're going to have fun because science is a lot of fun. I want you to imagine you are the element and I want you to describe yourself. So how would carbon describe itself? Well, let's have a read at how carbon would introduce itself to you. Hello. I am carbon. I am often called the chameleon of all the elements because I can be found in many different forms. Remember in our last lesson we discovered that carbon was an, uh, an interesting element because it had different allotropes like diamonds and graphite. Okay, so we know what it means to be a chameleon. It's found in different forms. When I want to be fancy, I can be found in my posh diamond form. But don't be fooled by my beautiful, shiny appearance. I am very hard and can cut through most other elements as easily as anything. Mm -hmm. I'm very useful too. Although you may say you have lead pencils. It is actually me in my graphite form that helps you do your work. My layers of crystals softly slide over each other and leave traces of myself 
on your paper. Right, that's interesting. Whilst diamonds in ring you can't really carry around with you because they're far too valuable. But you can carry carbon around with you on the paper where your graphite pencil has made marks. Are you learning a little bit more about carbon? Let's go on. But did you know that I am part of every living thing? I am the most important element in carbohydrates, proteins, fats, and even your genes. You eat me in your foods, and then your body uses my atoms to make the body that you have. And amazingly, when living things die, I stay present in the ground, and after millions of years, I help you again in the form of coal and oil. Today, scientists are discovering more and more about me. You see, I have other forms too. In the future, you will learn more about my other form, graphene, in nanotechnology and electronics. All right, now that wasn't just simply a list of the properties of carbon. We tried to make it a lot more engaging and interesting by using our fun way of introducing ourselves as an element. So when we are writing these descriptions of elements, we, as I said, have to do some research. Now here is a wonderful website that you can look at. And I will show it to you again at the end of the lesson. But you can actually see what the elements look like and learn what their properties are if you don't have a textbook handy. Remember, you're going to use adjectives. Use exciting words and appropriate words to describe the element. Make sure that your element story contains all the scientific facts. Even though we're making up a story, don't be too creative. Make sure that it's still science. First, make the list of words. That's the plan. Compile short sentences and read your work to make improvements. So this is simply a list of the properties of chlorine. It's a poisonous yellow-green gas. You could research its history as a weapon. It's an important disinfectant, especially in drinking water and swimming pools. It's a very important element in compounds such as hydrochloric acid and sodium chloride, which is table salt. Do your research. Find out, is it present in your body? Where do we get our chlorine from? So this is almost a plan of the properties of chlorine and you are now going to work it into a wonderfully exciting introduction to chlorine. So you would start off your description, hello, I am chlorine, and think of the wonderful things you can talk about as you write your description about how important chlorine is to humans, but can also kill humans. So you've got an interesting little bit of a, 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 a baddie and a goodie all wrapped into one in this character that you're going to explain and describe to us. I'd also like you to look at some other elements and here is that website that I told you that you can go to in order to find more information. But remember that you can also look it up in Google. You could simply type into Google and say, what are the properties of gold, for example? And then you're going to compile your wonderful descriptions. Let's go and look at some of the properties of gold that we might like to include if we wrote a description about ourselves as gold. I'm sure we would talk about how beautiful we are, and I'm sure we would talk about how we are an important indicator of wealth. Kings and queens wear us on their heads in crowns, and you're going to talk about gold jewelry, for example. 
But gold isn't only important simply as a decorative item, making ornaments and jewelry. Gold is also extremely important inside our computers. So we need to look at both the pretty or aesthetic characteristics of gold as well as its very practical aspects. We can look at the history of gold as well. We can look at how gold was discovered, maybe even in South Africa. We can look at how people pan for gold and find beautiful gold nuggets like this one in streams and rivers. We can also talk about how gold is dug out of the ground and the problems associated with mining gold and that sometimes humans don't always take care of the ground that they leave behind after they've extracted all the gold. So you've got lots of interesting things to write about in your description, hello, I am gold. What about lead? Remember that lead is not that gray material found inside your pencil. That's graphite, which we've discovered is carbon. So let, you would have to do some research into lead. Why is lead maybe given the symbol PB? What are the properties of lead? Is it a hard metal or is it a soft metal? Lead is very important. And for many, many years, lead and the properties of lead were misunderstood, not fully explored. So lead was often used in things like paint, which was used to paint the walls. And only some years afterwards did people discover that lead, if ingested or taken into the mouth, is poisonous. So things in a child's bedroom, like their cot that they were sleeping on or their walls, were painted with a lead-based paint. And little children, being what little children are, they would put this into their mouths, they would lick walls and bite on their little cots, and they would suffer from lead poisoning. So we've got another very important element that is useful, but also has a dark, sinister side. What about neon? You see neon all around you at night when you look at neon lights and how bright they are and how we have different colored neon lights. You can talk about how neon as an element is very inert. Remember we said that argon was inert. It doesn't react with other metals, with other gases, with other liquids. It likes to stay by itself. So maybe your character of neon would be a very private character that doesn't mix nicely or join up with other elements. Instead, it loves to make the night sky beautiful with lots of of wonderful neon lights and you can talk about how neon is a loner and a lonely element because it doesn't mix or react with other elements but it loves to bring joy to us because of the pretty signage that we can see when we look at neon lights so i want you to be creative with your science i don't want you just to write boring lists of properties make it interesting to learn about all the elements. And I'm sure that you will realize that simply learning lists of properties like this is meaningless. But if we created a character of chlorine and we had our character being a baddie as well as a good person, well, then we've got something interesting to learn and it'll help us remember that gas, chlorine, that gas, neon, or that solid lead, solid gold in far more accurate detail. Have some fun. Remember, science is fun. And until next time, I'll see you. Goodbye.